Good morning, Gina. Thank you again. Hey, thank you. <laughs> All right, you. guys, it's nine o'clock and we're excited Institute this morning. Um, welcome to free programs for development and sharing online content. My name is Sarah Kitzmiller and I'm your session host. I'm here to support the session presenter um, who I'll introduce shortly, offer technical assistance to, to you all, to participants, as well as share the session evaluation and certificate information at the end of the session. Please do not hesitate uh, to use the chat to ask questions or request technical support. Um, at this time, though, I would like to introduce to you um, your session presenter, Gina, Gina Pavlovich. Did I say your last name correctly, Gina? Pavlovich, yep. Pavlovich, okay, excellent. And she is the director of Nicewanger Online Programs, and so we're, we're in for a treat today. So uh, thank you for being here, and I'm gonna turn it over to Gina. Thanks so much, Sarah. Um, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being on uh, with me today. Um, so I'm Gina. I am uh, the director of Nicewanger Online. If you haven't heard of uh, Nicewanger Online, um, and if you teach it, you know, elementary or um, the younger kids, I, I don't expect that you have. But um, what the Nicewanger Foundation has done is created a program where students in our local high schools can take um, supplemental online courses. So if they go to a high school that doesn't, for example, offer Latin, they can come online and take Latin with us. Um, I've been teaching for Nicewanger Online since 2011, and I've been the director of the program since 2015. And I've learned so much um, during my role as teacher and as director. And, and I just want to come here today with you guys and share some information, share some resources that we use within our online programs all the time, and, and hopefully just give you some ideas for your own classroom to use in the classroom, some online technology to use within the classroom, and then also some online te technology to possibly put in an online course. Um, to help your students, you know, if we are working from home again anytime in the future. Um, so the first thing I want to say is um, talk about why I'm here and what are we doing here. And before I say that, though, I want to talk about what we will not be doing here. Um, and this this pretty triangle and you, you see remembering, understanding, applying. We've all seen this when we were going through our teacher ed classes. Um, I remember when I first um, started teaching online and I went to a professional development and I was already feeling a little overwhelmed. And then I walk into the professional development and this guy is up there talking and talking about how this is a great tool to use. And I just remember feeling so overwhelmed because I did, I looked at it and I was like, I think I know three things. I, I know three words on that within that entire triangle. And one thing I want to stress to you guys today is to not let everything that's out there because we all know there's a ton of stuff out there please don't let that kind of overload you or make you feel overwhelmed when you do start working and trying to pull um, any kind of technology into your classroom when i started teaching online i literally had two programs that i used and i was very comfortable with as i moved forward and you know each year I'd add on a few more or I'd have you know the friend who taught in the classroom next to me would say oh Gina I found this have you heard of this and I'd go online and check it out and if I liked it I would use that but really um, today while I'm talking I want you to think about um, just a few of these I'm going to talk about maybe four or five we only have an hour right and in an hour we're not going to be able to cover really in depth a ton of things but I want you to think of maybe just a few that I'm talking about and maybe see if there's a way that you can you know um, bring those into your classroom to help your students um, again when I'm uh, when I say to just sit and think I'm going to be clicking and I'm going to say, oh, look at this and look at this and look at this. And, and you're going to be having this look on your face right here and, and be thinking, Gina, you're killing me right now. But what I want you to do is just don't stress about any of that, because every program that I'm getting ready to click on and talk to, 
you about. I have created videos that very in-depth videos um, that show you how to get started within these programs, how to, if it's a program that you can use with your students, how to get your students started within them, how to create, you know, some of it just goes straight down to that basic, how do I create this free ac account that everyone is talking about. Um, but if you have this website pulled up uh, that's showing my slides, um, the remote learning website. And all of the, um, all of my sessions that I'm doing for Rural Life are up here and you can feel free to, you know, if you want to know more about Canvas and how to use Canvas, please check those out. But today what I'm going to be doing is um, focusing on this section here, the, the free online programs. And if you click that, you can see that I've already got a number of videos up here to help give you ideas. And then also I'm going to be adding to this. So I've, I've actually already um, on Monday, was it Monday? I think on Monday when I did the Canvas Basics um, session, I had a teacher email me and ask me a question. And it was an amazing question that I knew other teachers would have. And so I created a short video to help her and I already added it to that website. So this is very much like a living website that we're going to keep adding to as we come across um, questions and as I come across more ideas. And, and I'm even learning from you guys. I had another email asking me about a program that I had literally never heard of and I just wanted to look into it just to learn about it. So please um, take a moment and just bookmark this so you have it. So later on when you are working in your classroom and you're trying to think of some, some technology um, and some things to use that you can, um, you can come here and, and get online and just check out these videos that will help you. So um, let's talk about what we are going to cover today. Um, and this right here is even too much. Like I just told you, I don't want to overwhelm you. And I put all of these little things here. But again, I'm just trying to kind of throw out some ideas. And, and as I'm talking about these individual um, things, I want you to kind of picture and, and, you know, think about, is there a way that I can use any of these programs to help within the content um, you know, to help share content within my class or to help my students learning. Um, and then I stress again that it's a, it's just just a few programs that you become comfortable with can help you create um, a great blended learning environment and even a great online environment for your students. Um, one thing that I'll say throughout the session is that you really want your students to um, you want them to create more than they consume. Um, and and that's, a, that's a rule for even when we're sitting in the classroom with our kids. We want them to be doing something more than just sitting there and taking in information. We want them to be doing something. We want them to be creating something. And um, all of these programs here are programs that you can use to create and share information, but they're also programs that your students can use to create and, and share information. So kind of keep that in mind, like when you're wanting your students to do that, that hands-on, that project that's really going to assess what they know, but also give them the, the ability to be creative and the ability to share information in a way that, that they think that it's intuitive and that it's helpful. Um, just, you know, how can you fit any of this into your own classroom? So I'm gonna go back to this website, the remote uh, learning website and talk to you just in order of kind of what we see here. And the very first thing you see is, um, and I have it bolded, is the program that I, if, if I say only go away from this session with one program in mind, this is the program I want you to have in mind. And what it is, 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 is a program that can record your screen. Um, I use one called Screencast Omatic. I also use one called Loom. Those are both free, and those are just years ago when I needed a screen recorder. A friend of mine who teaches French said, Oh, Gina, have you heard of Screencast? And I was like, No, show me. And, and so that's how I got into Screencast Omatic. But um, 
what you do with a screen recorder is um, it's it's very intuitive, but you just pull up um, your screen, you pull up the program, and whatever is showing on your screen, it will record that plus record your voice. Um, with screencast, which I have showing right here, it can record just your screen. It can record your video within the screen, which I'll show you one in just a moment, um, or it can record just you. And so this is um, such a great tool for when you have one, when you want to teach your students how to do something. Um, we all have brought in new technology into our classrooms and then we've spent the day saying the same question over and over and, and saying, look at the board, I just wrote it on the board, you know, and doing things like that. But if you can create a how-to video that shows your students click here click here click here then it's going to save you a lot of time and gray hairs and then it's also going to be really beneficial for your students because they can just watch it and if they ever have a question they can go back to that video and if they're ever working from home they have this great little video to uh to help them to help them you know work without having you there and so they don't feel completely alone because they do have you there they have you there on a video showing them how to do something um screencast like i've said i've used for years and i just recently in the past year started paying for it um but before that i i had you can see here i have almost 300 videos and i never had to pay for anything i had um you know, you can do have editing options with the free option, but the big reason why I started paying for it was because when I am sending videos to my teachers or to my counselors or school administrators, I'm sometimes pulling up screens that have um, that have sensitive information on them, student information on it. So if you look here, um, and I'm going to pause it. Uh, but this is a screen in my SIS and I created a video for school administrators and school counselors that talk to them about how to see your students current grades in the online in our online courses and all of this here is student names and email addresses and guardian email addresses and so I of course needed to remove that and beforehand I was using these big white boxes and then I was having to move boxes all over the place and it just started getting really ugly and and taking way too much time and so I did start paying for screencast to get that option that editing option and if, if I have any administrators out there any technology coaches who you want to share you know information you want to create a how-to video for your teachers but um, you will have to blur out information then I, I highly recommend screencast for that um, because it's been it's been a lifesaver for me um, but so there's one and what I'm doing in this video is I'm just saying click here click here click here hit get data and, and everything comes up. So it, it's, a, it's a short video, three and a half minutes, and it helps um, all of my counselors and all of my administrators to be able to get the information that they need. Um, something else that I use uh, screen recordings for is I will record over YouTube videos. So um, let me, this is, um, from an uh what class is this an economics class maybe or a personal finance class um but i have students who are logging into my class from all over the state and a lot of them are working from their school and they cannot click a youtube video within their school and many of you if you put a link to a youtube video within your canvas class or your google classroom the students will not be able to to um to view it it will block them and so what i did was I pulled up um, the screencast recorder I outlined I pulled I then pulled up YouTube I outlined just the video on YouTube I hit record and I started playing the video and, and it's, it's not amazing quality which I, I don't care that much about but what it does is it then puts screen it then puts that YouTube video 
into a format that I can put within my Canvas class. I can actually embed this into my Canvas class and anybody can watch it anywhere. I have with all of the school systems that we work with across the state, I'm gonna knock on wood right now, I've never had a school system that any students have had trouble accessing Screencast-O-Matic videos. So um, that's another great use for it. If you do have videos that you want to put and if some of them happen to be, um, in, in YouTube and you're worried about the students not being able to access those YouTube videos. Um, and then I also talked about, we want our students to create, right? Uh, so let me show you this right here. And uh, this is me uh, bragging a little bit. This is my son and he was in the third grade last year and he used Screencast to record himself speaking over his um, Google Slides project for class. Um, I went in, I pulled up screencast. I said, this is the record button, this is the pause button. If you mess up, click this trash can and start over. And then I left the room and I came back when he was calling for me about 30 minutes later and he had created this video. And I told you about how you can do a picture within the screen. This is one of those instances. This is what it looks like when you um, want to have your video within a, a screen. And you can move this box around to other places. So if that's not in a good spot, maybe it's covering something you don't want covered, you can move, move that around. But again, a third grader, uh, he was able to do it easily. He would get, I heard him a few times get frustrated because he'd mess up while he was talking and he'd have to start over. And I actually loved that. I'm, I start over on these videos all the time, but um, I will press play. Hey everybody, it's Gina again. Um, and let me, uh, just a really quick, let me get ahead to a part where you can see him speaking. You could even do this with younger students. And instead of reading full sentences like this, they could be talking about shapes or anything like that. And, but if, and all of your students can log into that one and this account. Is another great thing about screencast is I can move forward. My teachers can move forward. If they're like, yeah, Gina, I already know this. They can look down here. And, and they can move forward. Um, your students can move forward if they get it. You know, they're like, yeah, I know that part. Let me just, just you know, push ahead to this part really and fast. And you can. Um, but this was just a great project for, um, for them to do. Again, a third grader. And within this video, and this video is on the website, within this video, I with talk about um, how, you know, even non-readers, even our littlest kids, could create um, a video like this within Screencast. And this is um, a lot like kind of using Flipgrid. If your school system has Flipgrid, then you probably don't need this Screencast for this anyway. You, you, would, you might need Screencast to record your screen and record your voice and things like that. But um, for, uh, for student recordings, if you have Flipgrid, then that's great. If you have Canvas, there are, um, things within Canvas where students can, can record themselves. And um, they can record just their voice or their voice and, and a video. And again, I, I highly recommend this. I, I don't know about you guys, but every one of my kids, they, they don't wanna be a movie star, they wanna be a YouTuber. And, and this was their way of kind of getting Creating to be a, a YouTuber. And they loved it and they felt just really cool and and I just thought that that was so much fun that they were able to do it and again I just really loved how easily they they did it and and I think that you know he he's in the third grade and he's a reader so he read over a um, his presentation but again I think even our littlest students could pull this up hit that red record button and then just start talking about you know whatever kind of prompt that you want them to speak about. And it's just a great learning tool and then also a great tool to share and the students can all see each other and, and learn from each other. So um, that is again, Screencast-O-Matic. The other one I talked about and there are videos on it is, um, it's called Loom. And Loom used to be very, very, like if you didn't pay, it was super basic, almost to the point that it was, you couldn't really use it. 
Um, but um, recently, they have made it so that any teacher can get a free account, and it's a free account for life, too. So it's not like you sign up and you get addicted to Loom and you love Loom, and then all of a sudden you can't use it anymore because they start charging you or wanting to charge you. But um, you can get a, um, a Loom recorder account and get their, their best editing options and um, I'll get it all for free. And all you have to do is when you sign up, they want you to use your, uh, your teaching email address. And that's kind of your only, that's all they ask for to kind of prove that you, um, you're a teacher. So um, screen recorder, again, I highly, highly recommend it. it it's gonna be a great way for you to get information across. And it's also going to be a fun way for students to make um, to make videos. Oh, and one thing I talk about in the video uh, that I've created here is you can create one account and give it like a generic username and password and all of your students access that one account to create their videos. So you don't have to in a class of 20, your 20 students do not have to create 20 different accounts. Um, they can all just log into one. So um, it's a, that's a great kind of tool and something to think about to just help, especially when it comes to, you know, we, we rarely like to create more accounts, especially for our students, because that's just one more thing that we have to, that we have to deal with. Um, so please, again, if you only come away from this uh, hour with one thing, start thinking about some kind of screen recorder program. And you may have one you use already, or you may have a friend who has one that is not Screencast or Loom, and, um, and that's great, but just some kind of program that uh, can help you as you are trying to share information with your students. This is, and it's going to, again, just be a time saver for you and a time saver within your classroom. So the, um, the next thing I wanted to show you is uh, you can get Canvas for free. Um, I did a whole session on Canvas. If you look up here, Canvas Basics, and many of you already have Canvas within your school system. Some of you um, are, are hearing uh, rumors or some of you even already know that your school system is going to be giving you Canvas in the fall. And what I've done here is I've talked to you about how to get a free Canvas account right now and why to do that. And the biggest thing is if you are um, in August, if your school system is telling you you're going to get Canvas this August, then that's great. That's exciting. But what is August like for every single teacher on the planet? Like it's crazy. It's, um, we're very busy, we're stressed, it's chaotic. This August is gonna be even crazier than what, I mean, I can't even imagine within the school systems with everything. And we're, we're going to, you know, our schools are gonna be trying to, to meet CDC guidelines while trying to teach students and keep them apart and do this. And I, I don't wanna think about it actually, but it, it's gonna be crazy, right? And so the last thing that you want to do is add on to that chaos by in in addition to everything that's going on by having to start from scratch with a canvas account and never going into a canvas classroom and and just having to start at the very beginning and so one thing within this video that i talk about is how to go to canvas get a free account and then start working within Canvas. And, and I'm not saying that during this summer you should build an entire online class, but I'm saying that you could go into this free account and you could start getting used to, um, oh, this is how I edit a page. This is how I add in a picture. This is how I do this and that. And, and it's just kind of like a great place to just play and practice. But then also, if you do um, go in and you create a lot of, let's say you put in some assignments and some information pages within this free account, it's then going to be very easy for you to take all of that that you've created and import it into your school's account that they give you in the fall.
And so it, it's not that everything that you do here in this free account is going to be lost. You are going to be able to use it and copy it into your school's account um, very easily. And, and I show um, within the video, I show how to, um, how to do that. Uh, you know, it, it's very, you very quickly, you go to settings on that free account, you export everything onto a file, and then you upload that file into your school systems account. So um, this is another big one that I highly recommend if you are not, if you currently do not have access to Canvas, and, um, but you think or you know that you will be getting a Canvas course, um, an, an empty course shell this fall, then I highly recommend you just create that free account. And what's gonna happen then is it's really, in the fall, you're gonna feel like a step ahead of everybody else because everybody else is going to go into Canvas and they're going to have nothing, just an empty shell. And you're gonna be able to go into Canvas and possibly have at least a few assignments or a few information pages or just some kind of head start um, when it comes to, you know, getting this ready for, for your students to access. Um, again, video right here, check that out uh, later on when you can, if you, if you think that's a great idea for you. And then finally, I said, again, I said earlier, we want these kids to create more than they consume. And so instead of just, you know, going through and then take that information and create something like right now you guys are going to go through this and you're going to consume this information but then I am hoping that you then take that information and it helps you to create something that will um, help you to uh, within your classroom and help your students so uh, the last things that I want to talk about are just some various programs that you or your students can use again they're all free and um, how you can use those to share content or to create fun content, just different things like that. So I'm gonna go here and click here and just go through <clears throat> the list and then talk about a few things um, in addition to what's currently on this list. Uh, first off, we, we did the screen recorder. So let's start with bookcreator.com. Um, Book Creator, here's the homepage. You um, get a free account just by, you know, putting in your email address and creating a password. And what happens when you do this is you're given a blank template of, you know, literally just a blank, it looks like pages of a book. And students can add in pictures, they can add in video, they can add, um, of course, text, anything like that. And it's very intuitive the way that it works. Um, within the video, I talk about, um, I show you how to do all this, but then I also show you, um, I'm bragging again, this is my daughter. She created um, a book about foxes. And this was something that during, um, while school was out this past spring, this was something that the um, her teachers asked her, um, to to create a presentation and but then they left it open which I love I love it when you can leave it open and say use whatever platform you want but create a presentation about your favorite animal and so she chose foxes and in this video I, I talk about how did she write this how did she add this text how was she able to embed these videos um, here's a picture from online uh, something else that you can do is uh, you can um, do just uh, voice recordings. So um, you can, as a teacher, you can create some, a few pages and then record yourself reading those pages. So again, for our younger students, they can have the written word here and then click it and have your voice as you're reading through it. Um, again, all of my kids want to be YouTubers, so they loved it. She loved doing this little video. She was still in her pajamas, and she loved doing this, these little videos. She loved doing the voice recordings. It was so easy to pull in pictures. Just like with Screencast, I, um, I pulled this up. I showed her some of the buttons 
up here at the top and how to, and basically there's just a giant plus sign to add. You add, you click add and um, you, uh, it then gives you all these options of how to add things. But I was able to leave her a third grader and come back and, um, and she, she had finished it. Um, she was able to do little short videos. I don't know video. about you guys, but all three of my children. Yeah, there's me. Um, one other thing I talk about is uh, she um, very or quickly. Or you can do just audio. Here's another oh. page, and it shows the audio file here. Click this so you can see it. So that was her, and but that was so. There's that little button for the audio file. So again, as a teacher, if you wanted to create something and then have your voice over it, that's a great way to do it. Or you can do the video also. But then again, so all of these pictures, she just clicked that add button, and a Google thing came up, and she was able to, and she started typing in, you know, different things about foxes. What do foxes eat? And she found that, and she just pulled it over. So um, very easy, very intuitive. And this is also something that my high school students use and, and they just blow me away. Uh, they create some of the most beautiful books and, and videos and, rec and they put recordings in it. And I have, I have emailed students before and asked them, how did you do that? That was so pretty. How did you make, you know, the, this happen or, or that and so my students have ended up teaching me some about about this website but again it's called book creator and I really think this is another great resource uh, and free resource that can be used and even uh, you know I, I think this and and you could help them but they could pull in pictures or um, at least they can use it to again like I said uh, watch, listen to you read, um, read materials with them. And so um, I just, I love this. And I think kindergarten through 12th grade, I think it, it could be used for those students. Um, so next, let me talk about, here's an oldie but a goodie. Many of you have probably heard about Quizlet. Um, I like Quizlet. I use it. I don't use it that much as a, um, teaching tool, but my, I use it as um, a tool that I offer to my students and my students use it a lot um, and they, they seem to enjoy it. it it's a, again, another easy one, another uh, free one. And um, you create, if you haven't seen Quizlet before, you, you create flashcards and this is very basic, but you can, um, I actually did this for my a doctoral class that I'm in. It is um, uh, one of our projects was to uh, create, uh, can't, I can't remember what they called it, like a summative type project of all of the um, theory within a couple of chapters. It was something like that. And so I took all of the, um, you know, basically the vocabulary words and, and all of the uh, ideas and, and things like that. And I turned it into flashcards. And then I could share these flashcards with the rest of my class. And that was really what our teacher was having us. The main reason why our teacher had us do it was we all created things in different ways. And then we all shared with each other. So um, it was really neat to see what other students did with the information and then to read it and read through it. And, and it was it was a great learning tool. And so um, I, I like doing that with my my students having like giving them an option of you know sometimes i say use anything you want sometimes i'll give them two or three different options but um just giving them that option and then letting them all see each other's um work and and learn from each other's work so quizlet is a fun one and is an easy one and again there's a there's a short little video that talks to you more about this but when you're wanting your students to actually create something to actually do something. This is a, a great way for them to do it. And then they just share the link. And, and so it, it's, it's easy for, for everyone to do. Um, Gina, there's a couple of questions in the chat. Yes, okay. Okay, uh, the first one, 
And I think this is going back to the book creator, for example, or maybe any of the tools. Okay. Is this, is this something students could do collaboratively? I'm already trying to think of how I can make meaningful group work if we are doing virtual school. Could three or four kiddos work on one book simultaneously? They can if they just all have the same, if they just log into the same um, account. Does that make sense? Um, there may be a way to add, uh, you know, um, what am I trying, like add editors. I've never done it. I can actually look into that because I love that idea. But I do know that multiple people can sign in, you know, from different places and, uh, and work within the books or the book that they're working on. Okay. Now, you may have answered this one just a second ago. It says, does every student have to have a separate account? No, uh, definitely not. And, and that's, that's one of my big uh, kind of pet peeves because I know when I'm sitting in a classroom, you know, as a high school teacher, I would have 30, 35 kids. And I don't want to sit there and while 35 kids create different accounts and then also while 10 of them forget their password the next day and can't get back in. So um, I highly recommend on a lot of these for the teacher to create one account that everybody shares. Um, screencast, I know you can have screencast, the same account can be logged into on multiple computers and everybody recording and, and it still works well. So, and, and this book creator also. All right, thank you. Any more? Is that, did that help a little? That's all I see. Okay. Yeah. And I'm gonna, I'm I'm just just gonna go ask ahead. Gina, uh, if, if I did say have multiple books, the kids could log in with Loom, right, and add under one login and add multiple perspectives to the same book to get around from having to have separate logins. Is that correct too? Good idea too, to, yeah, to have that one book and then kids give their thoughts, you know, use Loom yeah. and to record themselves giving their thoughts. I love that. And I just made a note to check on book creator to see if you can have, you know, multiple editors um, with the same, uh, like different accounts maybe, but two different accounts working on the same book. Because that, that might be something, especially like that teacher said, if they're working from home one day. Hey, Gina. Uh-huh. scroll down on the book creator, uh, or actually I clicked on features, and about halfway down, it, there, it looks like there's a video on how to do real-time collaboration. Oh, great, great. I'm going to write that down. Seamlessly across multiple devices with real-time feedback. Nice. So that's cool. That's really cool. Okay. Thank you. I love that. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to... See, look, you guys teach me stuff all the time. I'm going to look at that later because that is such a great idea. And I love any kind of collaborative um, and even in online. And, and it, it, it's maybe sometimes a little trickier online to do collaboration, but it's definitely not impossible. It, it's definitely doable. So um, I love it when places like this then make it a little bit easier for us. Is there anything, anything else? Okay, I will go on then. Um, the, the final two that are here, um, you guys have probably seen um, videos that look like this, where you've got kind of a cartoon or a couple of cartoon characters and pictures are coming in and out. Um, and then there's writing. See how the hand is, is doing um, the writing at the bottom. Uh, this is done, and it's done for free, uh, by using Powtoons. And it's, um, this is another one that the students love to use uh, because there's so many different options. There are different, um, just everything. The, the layouts, the backgrounds, the what your characters are doing, how, how do you have your characters speaking, um, are you speaking in it or is it the handwriting? There's just a lot of different ways to do videos. This is also a fun way and, and a different way for teachers to do um, their own little videos and presentations and, and share it 
with the students. Um, this is another, this is one though, I will, uh, a little warning about, about this one and probably uh, a warning that goes along with a lot of them is um, you will have those kids who you give them an hour and a half class period to do this and they work the entire time and at the end they are like two slides into the presentation and and that's because they're sitting there focusing on um oh gosh you know i want this girl to have this kind of hair no i think it'd be cooler if she had this color hair no let's make the background yellow no i think i'm gonna make it blue you know so they will stress and they will play with all of those little options almost to the point that it's it's a uh, you know, it's not helping them, it's hurting them, it's holding them back. So I do stress to my students that, you know, you, you can't spend all day doing this. You, um, if you wanna go home tonight and play around with all these tiny little things, then that's fine. But um, that is one thing with Powtoons and um, I guess all of them, I mean, cause I could even think of how it could happen within Book Creator. The students just um, are there and, and they're wanting to pull in every picture they can think of, or they're wanting to make a 10 minute video on every single page when that's not really necessary. So um, just, uh, I would keep that in mind when you are introducing your students to any of these programs where they get, they're, they're a lot of fun and they get to have a lot of options with them, but uh, it can be overwhelming sometimes and it can kind of take them off track instead of helping to keep them to keep them on track with working. But again, this is, uh, this is called Paltoons and it's the, the website and I didn't pull it up. It's just Paltoons, paltoons.com. And um, again, it's free. You can create a teacher account and your students can all log in to that account easily or you can, um, or they can create their own accounts. This explainer video is um, probably one that you guys have seen the most. I know I see it all the time, especially in professional development. Um, you see that super, it is, it's fairly easy. It, I mean, I think it's, it's very easy. Um, and, but I do have a video here and I pulled that up a moment ago here that just kind of shows you step by step here, you know, create, create an account here. I told him I was a teacher and what I taught and, um, and then it started giving me like some template ideas and, and things like that. So this one was, um, a great one. And again, another great way for your students to, um, create something within your, within your class, something that's, that's really gonna be high quality too. And then this here, the Cambridge Cartoon Maker, um, this is one that I had no idea existed until I asked my US history students to create a political cartoon. And I gave them a couple of ideas, um, like how to do it in Google, for, for instance, and um, things like that, but, I had never heard of Cartoon Maker, and one of my students created the um, just the coolest little cartoon, and and he, and he used it with this, and so from then on, I start I added that to my ideas of you know make a cartoon. Here's some ideas of places to go, and and I added this one, but um, it's uh it's from Cambridge. the The website is CambridgeEnglishOnline.com/slash/CartoonMaker. But um, if you just Google Cambridge Cartoon Maker, it will come up. Um, but again, the free account is you just got a ton of options um, and uh, maybe too many sometimes, you know, because you can create all you get to choose. What does this person look like? What's their hair look like? What's the color? What's their eye color? What, are, what clothes are they wearing? You know, maybe too many options sometimes, but um, you do get a ton of options to choose from. And it's just a really neat way to um, to share information with the kids in a different way. Let me pull up this uh, shot. Anything right that is, um, you see, but sorry, I'm trying to get it to move forward, and I don't want it to talk though. Uh, 
it's, it's a great way to share information with the kids. And then it is a great way for, um, for the students to then share information with you. And, and so uh, the, this is another one that's very intuitive to use. Um, and this video shows you uh, all of the different um, places to click, you know, how to pull in a character and then how to make that character's hair, hair brown and, and how to put that character in a suit or put that character in a swimming suit or, you know, whatever, how to, how to make the background an office or a beach or whatever that that's needed. Um, but it's just, uh, it's been, it's really fun for me to use. And I, I find myself using it just to make short little, um, you know, almost like a meme, you know, to, to kind of like, if I'm telling my kids, great work last week on everything. I will put, I will make one of these that's just funny and kind of silly. And that, that is saying, you know, thanks for all your hard work. And, and then put that on the, the cover of my, or the homepage of my, my Canvas course. And just to kind of make them giggle. But you can, um, you can have, uh, there's so many choices. You can, you know, give some real information on them too. That that's, makes it a little more memorable in this format. And again, the kids can can do the same. So it's a it's a wonderful little tool here. And I've never paid for I've never paid for this one. I've never paid for Powtoons. I've never paid for Book Creator. Um, <clears throat> I've never paid any money for Prezi. Uh, Prezi is another one that I like to use within my classroom to help students um, to help students when it comes to creating. So um, this is a this is a page from my online class, and one thing that so I already talked about you know creating giving a prompt to a project, but then letting the students decide how they want to present that to you, and and I do that, but then I also. I sometimes mandate that you have to use this program. And the reason why I do that is because I want them to learn new programs. And this is an example of a time when I tell them, you have to use this. And in this situation, I want them to use Prezi to create a newspaper um, that is, we, we pretend like the, uh, the war just ended and the you are in charge of creating a newspaper that does kind of a summary of the war and it, it's very in-depth i have a, I, t I tell them and of your paper should be a summary of world war ii the second should talk about pearl harbor um, i give them a website that they go to where you can hear um survivors being interviewed and so they um what they do is they pretend like they were the ones who interviewed that survivor and they do a um a write-up of that interview i have them put in propaganda posters just all of this stuff but it's um very easy to do if they know how to use prezi and so with this lesson they're learning um, about World War II, but they're also learning how to use this new tool that um, that is, you can see here, I use it for work. Here's something I did in a class I'm taking. Here's something, this is a presentation I did about Nice One Girl Online last, last summer. So um, I use it myself all the time, but uh, that is something else you might want to think about while you're in your classroom. It, it's great to be open and say, you know, give them multiple options of programs or just be wide open and say, use whatever you want. But then it's also great to sometimes make them use a program that you know is most likely going to be new to a lot of them and, um, and help them to get used to it because it's, uh, it's going to teach them some resilience, right? Because anytime we learn any new program, we, we start getting frustrated, but they got to learn it and they got to get moved through that frustration because they, um, you know, they have to do it for a grade. So um, uh, the Prezi is an example of one of those. And they, and I get emails that's like, Miss P, I could do this in PowerPoint in five minutes. And I'm like, I know, and that's why I don't want you to do it in PowerPoint. So um, just, uh, uh, just Prezi, and again, there's a video that covers Prezi and it, it talks more about Prezi, but it's one that is uh, free 
and it will always ask you it'll it'll ask you basically every time you log in do you want to upgrade which which can get annoying but um it's one that you can uh you can create one account and all of your students log in or your students can create individual accounts this one i do know there are collaboration tools and they are within the free version so um, if your students do all have separate accounts they can easily connect with you can take one prezi and you can share it with other people it's almost like a google doc you can share it and give those people editing access and they can then all work within the same prezi and um and i've talked about the newspaper template here but there's a ton of, of different ones within Prezi. If you look right here, um, this is the second time that I have my students use Prezi within the class. And the first time was when they did a timeline, a World War I timeline, like leading up to World War I. I wanted them to create a timeline of all the events that happened. And I listed, I think there's 15 or so events. And, and um, I show them the template for a timeline in Prezi. And, and once they get used to using it, it's, it's very easy to pull in the pictures and then to type up the information and, and all of that. So um, Prezi.com is another great resource that you might want to think about um, with your students. Uh, uh, I'm getting low on time, so I'm gonna move fast, but these are all on the website. Just wanna stress that one more time. You're gonna find all of these here. But one more thing is, um, I talked earlier about pulling up your screen recorder, pulling up a YouTube video and recording over it. There is actually a website called safeshare.tv and you can put in a YouTube link and, and click here and it will turn that YouTube video into a safe share video, which takes out all of the um, ads like it says here to it, to use YouTube without the ads and distractions. Um, and it's great. But here's the big but for this one. And the reason why I use a screen recorder for most of my YouTube videos is um, you can only with the free version, you can only do 10 videos. And for me, um, in my class, 10 videos was fine. But because I have, you know, a sociology teacher who needed five other videos um, changed from YouTube and then I had an economics teacher who needed four videos that were not in YouTube. You know, I quickly ran out of space within SafeShare because I was doing it across all of the of my online classes. Um, but if you're using this just for your individual class, it, it's, um, it's super easy and it is uh, it gives you a link to the video that is not youtube it's no association with youtube so schools don't block it and and it also gives you an embed page um let's do i'm going to do one more and this one's going to be super fast and this one is really going to be um for more of my secondary students um you know seventh grade eighth grade and especially high school students uh MOOCs has anybody ever heard of a MOOC M-O-O-C it's a massive open online course um universities throughout the U.S. throughout the world are are creating MOOCs and they're putting it online for anybody to access and if you are teaching um oftentimes any kind of class within secondary but i use it a lot i use it in history class i've used it in an economics class i've used it in a personal finance class but you can just go to google and you can just type in mooc and then the content that you want to cover and you can find all of these open courses um, that you can have access to for your students and the really like the coolest thing about this and the thing that the students um, really enjoy is that I will within my canvas class I'll have a thing there that says it's now time to take your first Yale course or it's now time to take your first uh, college level course and the kids are like wait what what do you do? you know and but all I'm doing is right here for example with this Yale course um, I teach US history and when I talk about the reconstruction era era I use some videos from this Yale professor 
And I think that's super, I think it's really neat. I know that I've had many students who have say like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. You know, I just sat in on a, a lecture from a, a, uni, a Yale University professor. But I, you can just find all of these great videos and material. And the cool thing about this video and a lot of them that I've seen, there's also, um, there's, a, there's a MIT video I use uh, for economics. Um, and the video is two hours long because it's just literally this professor's lecture, class lecture for that day. But what many of them do is they divide it up. So, um, you know, maybe I just want them to watch this one five minute part or seven minute part. And so I can click here and they and tell them to click here and they just watch that one piece of the video instead of in this situation watching an entire the entire 38 minute video so um if you especially um, any of my secondary teachers out there if you're looking for material and and you um you you google mooc m-o-o-c and, and there's a there's a place here that talks about it but if you google that it will um it's just you can find some great things, and and I, I think it's also a, a in addition to teaching U.S. history, I'm I hope that I'm teaching these kids. You know, you can do this. You you know, you just listen to a lecture by a Yale professor, and then you answered questions for me, and you did great. So why couldn't you do this for real one day? So, okay, I'm out of breath and I'm losing my voice. Are there, are there um, any more questions for me? I do want to pull this up for you, Sarah, so you can talk to them about this link. There was one question, Gina, real quick. Okay. okay. Uh, it says, do all of these tools work in Canvas? They do. Uh, and that, that's what I teach out of. And every single one of these tools are, you can easily embed or share a link and they pull up beautifully. And then someone asked real fast, same as Google Classroom? I don't know. I'm so sorry. I would assume yes, just because Google and Canvas are kind of competing and so Google's got to keep up. But I'm so sorry. I'm just not that familiar with Google Classroom. But the in I I will, you know, I will say yes for the fact that everything that you create in any of these programs, you can get a link to it. And because of that link, you can easily put that link within your your Google classroom as you would a Canvas classroom. Uh, with Canvas, I know how to embed it so students don't even have to leave the Canvas course. But but with Google, I don't. I'm very sorry. Well, so we want you to be able to access the materials that Gina shared with us today because there was a wealth of information. I, I took a whole page and a half of notes, Gina, um, <laughs> today. So these were awesome. Um, so just see the schedule registration and find your session under the day. And then there's a materials link there and that information will be uploaded. Today, those um, sessions, I, I just copied and pasted this, the sites, the Google sites um, page at the top. I'm getting ready to, but we, we want to just say thank you so much for attending the virtual summer session today. And please take our one minute survey. It will allow us to reflect on your thoughts um, about the session. And we're always looking for ways to improve. Um, so collect your information if you would like to receive a certificate of attendance for the session. And at this time, I'm dropping the evaluation uh, request link in the chat box. Let's see here. So if you will just um, take that session and then hand that back in. Um, as, as soon as you can. And I'm going to turn it over to, to Gina for any closing thoughts. But uh, again, thank you. Thanks. Um, I just, uh, you can see on the, the last um, slide here is uh, that evaluation and certificate. And yeah, please uh, take a moment and fill that out really fast as soon as we're done. Um, and then I just wanted to um, stress to you that if you email me with questions about anything today, once you get into something, um, let's say you have a question or, or let's say somebody you know says something about a program that I didn't even talk about and you want to see if I know anything about it, please, um, 
please don't hesitate to just send me an email. This is, um, I'm the director of Nice Online, but I'm also the coordinator of learning resources. And a part of my position with the foundation is professional development. And it's, I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, I love it. I love working with teachers. I, I love helping. Um, I love trying to brainstorm and get new ideas because like I said earlier, I'm just, I'm learning from you guys probably more than what you're learning from me. So um, please email me uh, anytime. And this is within the, um, as you can see there, that's within the, uh, the slideshow there. So thank you guys so much for coming. I hope I gave you at least one idea of something that you could um, possibly use in your classroom. Awesome. Thank you. Everybody have a great day.